Yes. <coughs> Thank you, my lords. Uh, my name is Senior Council of Congo Mogeni. I'll be arguing uh, on behalf of the sixth uh, petitioner. And my lords and my lady, the main uh, argument that I'll be advancing before your, your lordships this morning is the effect that this law has been enacted by the National Assembly in contravention of mandatory provisions of the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya. My lady, in my opening remarks, the Constitution that was enacted by the people of Kenya in 2010 created a bicameral parliament that has two houses, the National Assembly and the Senate. My Lord, in Article 94, one of the Constitution, the legislative authority is donated to the two houses of Parliament. As we have uh, stated in paragraph 48A, of the petition, this bill in its entirety was never considered by the Senate. That's a, a fact, and it's not in dispute. The second argument, my lady, is that Kenya operates under a constitution that creates a limited government whereby there are powers that can be exercised by the government of the day. There are powers that are reserved for parliament, and there are powers that are reserved for the judiciary. Now, to understand this very clearly, my lords and lady, Article 109 of the Constitution, which is very prescriptive, states how legislative powers should be exercised by the National Assembly and the Senate. And it's very clear, my lords, that there are laws that will only be enacted by the National Assembly. My lord, I want to read for the court the provisions of Article 1093, which says that a bill not concerning county government is considered only in the National Assembly. So any bill that is not concerning county government, that legislative authority is conferred on the National Assembly. What then is a bill concerning county governments? My lady, that answer is provided for in Article 110 of the Constitution. And Article 110 states that in this constitution, a bill concerning county kind of government means a bill containing provisions affecting the functions and the powers of county kind of governments. My lady, the bill, the impugned finance bill that is before, act that is before this house. It's not in dispute that it amended Section 31 of the Employment Act, and it created housing levy or housing tax that's supposed to be deducted by Kenyans and passed over to county government for purposes of constructing houses. The question is then, my lord, is housing a function of the national government, or is it a function? of the county governments. My, la my lady and my lords, that answer can be found in the last chapter of our constitution, <coughs> more specifically the part two of the sixth uh, schedule. You will notice that uh, sort of the fourth schedule. You will notice that, my lord, the fourth schedule has uh, designated functions that are reserved for the national government and functions that are reserved for the county governments. 
Now, if you go to section eight of part two, if you look at the heading of section eight, it says county planning and development. So it lists the functions there. The first one is statistics. The second one is land survey and planning. The third, the third one is boundaries and fencing. And the fourth one is housing. So housing as a function given to the county government includes county planning and development. So that, my lord, any law that has provisions touching on a function that the fourth schedule has reserved for county governments must be considered by the two houses. If it's a bill that has provisions that don't concern functions of county governments, under Article 109, that bill can be considered by the National Assembly alone. The question then begs, my Lord, if the National Assembly enacts a law in clear contravention of the provisions of this Constitution, what should be the effect of such a law? Our humble submissions, my lords, is that any law that is enacted without following a prescribed procedure in the Constitution is null and void and invalid. And I want to rely on uh, the provisions of Article 2 on the supremacy of the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya. Article 2, my Lord, is very clear that this Constitution is the supreme law of the land, but the provisions that are very key on the circumstances that are facing us is that no person may claim, that is Article 2, sub Article 2, to exercise any state authority except as authorized under this Constitution. So this Constitution only authorizes parliament as an entity to enact a law that has functions con concerning county governments only if that law has been considered by the National Assembly and the Senate. As to what should be the fate of any law that has not complied with this constitution, my lords, the answer is in, section, in Article 2, subsection 4 of our constitution. And it says, my lords, that any law uh, or any act that is enacted in contravention of this constitution is invalid. My Lord, this constitution was enacted so that all institutions created under this constitution <coughs> must abide by it. And I want to give an example, my lords. What would happen if a judge sitting uh, as a judge of the employment section was to exercise powers that are reserved by the High Court as created under Article 165. There will be chaos, my Lord. Because Article 162 that creates system of courts has created limited powers to be exercised by judges of employment and environment court. And it says Parliament shall establish courts with status of the High Court to hear and determine disputes relating to employment and labor relations and then environment. Then 165 creates the High Court with unlimited original jurisdiction in criminal and civil matters. My Lord, for there to be order, even within the institution of the judiciary, judges sitting in uh, land environment division must appreciate that their powers don't extend to the powers that are being exercised by the High Court created under Article 165. And we want to send the same message, my lords, to the National Assembly, that the powers that are donated to the National Assembly can only be exercised in accordance with this Constitution. Anything, my lord, done outside this Constitution is invalid, and it will create a very chaotic environment in our legislation. My Lord, I want us to distinguish the Senate of the Republic of Kenya and, for example, the House of Lords. 
My Lord, the Senate of the Republic of Kenya exercises its power on behalf of the sovereign power that has been donated to it by the people of Kenya. We are popularly elected by the people, just like the Senate of the United States of America, my Lord. If you go to jurisdictions like Britain, the House of Lords does not enjoy popular mandate from the people. So that, my Lord, the legislative authority of the Senate cannot be taken away whimsically by the National Assembly. That will be overthrowing the Constitution of the Republic uh, of Kenya, more so the sovereignty of the people. Because at call one, my Lord says, all sovereign power belongs to the people. That is at call one, subsection one. And two says, the people may exercise their sovereign power either directly or through their democratically elected representative. The Senate of the Republic of Kenya, my Lord, is democratically elected by the people of Kenya. And there is a reasonable expectation, my Lord, by all the people who reside in counties that the senators that they have elected democratically through a popular vote will exercise that legislative mandate as provided for in this constitution. And I don't want to uh, bring it to the attention of the court uh, that ob this... Obviously you were not here when I was allocating time. Yes. You know you're eating into the time of your other petitioners mm -hmm. and we are not going to extend that time. Eh? Okay. So, so my lord, in, on. in, in, in uh, how many minutes maybe do I have or I'm already done? You were done long time because you know <laughs> it is one petition. Yes. You are already eating into the time of the other petitioner. But if you wish to go on uh, and inconvenience your colleagues, uh, it's fine with us here. Though then, in, in, in summary, my lord, uh, in summary, my lord, all the uh, arguments uh, in support of uh, that violation of the Constitution is contained in the submission that were filed uh, before this court dated the 25th of August 2023. We have cited several cases from the Supreme Court that has clearly drawn a demarcation between the legislative mandate of the National Assembly and uh, the Senate and uh, legislative process that should be exercised jointly by the institution of Parliament that constitutes National Assembly and the Senate. And Lord, all those decisions have been highlighted in our submissions that are before the court. We pray, my Lord, that specifically the provision that is amending uh, Section 31 of the Employment Act should be declared invalid, null and void. And second, my Lord, the entire finance bill should be declared unconstitutional for containing uh, provisions that are outside what is traditionally known as a finance bill. And finally, my Lord, the mutating of this particular taxation from a levy to a taxation renders the same invalid and it should be declared unconstitutional. I thank you, my Lord. Thank you.